Well, hey there, fellow YouTubers. It's Frank Bush here again. So uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you a different setup for the uh, batteryless um, solar systems that I do. This one's really an ultralight, uh, as cheap as you can get to get the power levels you need to cook and that kind of thing. So uh, I'll just grab my bag with my bits in it. And uh, I've got the solar panels in the back of the truck, so I'll shift camera angles and pull them out and set this up and I'll walk through in detail exactly what I have here. So stay tuned. Just pull the solar panels out of the back here. I normally carry a couple of gallons of water with me because I tend to be off in the back country a fair bit. So it's good to have potable water with me. I've got some uh, extension cables just to give me an extra length on the cabling uh, with the MC4 connectors attached. I'll show you those. And it's really just to give me a bit of extra length to the wire when I hook it onto the solar panel, yeah? So I'll just set those aside. And then I've got this solar panel that I picked up. I grabbed this off Facebook Marketplace. This is a 195 watt panel and I acquired it for about $150. So I got it for less than a buck a watt. So, and it's got the MC4 connectors on it as well. So I'll just connect on my extension cable and that kind of thing. I'll switch camera angles and just show you hooking those on. So like I say, really simple. I've got the MC4 connections coming off the back of the solar panel. I simply just plug, you know, male to female and uh, male to female again. And that gives me my MC4s just at a longer length, yeah? So I'll switch camera angles again and I'll hook up the actual uh, power unit, if you will. Now the next step is going to be just to get out my little minimalist kit, if you will, my gear. And this is it, really. Uh, no, not much more than a couple wires. Uh, hopefully the camera's seeing that already. I know it's a jumbled mess. I'll straighten it out and I'll go through it in detail. But uh, in essence, this is about the smallest unit I know of that'll convert it over so that the uh, solar power, of course the cables are all jumbled, always when I'm recording, right? So the this is about the smallest unit I know of that'll allow me to convert the roughly 20 volt coming off the solar panel into a 12 volt so I can use it for cooking and that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna plug that in the same, you know, the male into the female, this male into that female, and I'm geared up. And like I say, I'll get a better angle on this and kind of just show you how simple this setup is. But really, I've got this little unit and it allows it to convert from cigarette lighter adapter into AC and USB, so I can plug that in at will. And hopefully the camera's picking that up. Green light lit up, lets me know I'm taking the charge. But initially, I'm just gonna make myself a coffee. So I've used this in lots of previous videos where I've got a little cigarette lighter adapter with the water immersion heater. So I'm just gonna pull out my coffee cup and throw a bit of water into that and I always like to do this in the beginning and then we got a cough because I'm going through the video like I say wasn't chintzy with it filled my coffee up full and I'll just plug that in now and the immersion heater is starting to heat up now so it's already hot enough I can't touch it so I'll just set that in and then I'll Grab the camera here and I'll just walk through how simple this setup is. So I've got the lines coming off the solar panel. Like I say, I just hooked on the extension cable, just give me a bit of length. And that just feeds into a little buck converter. And these are about $25 items on eBay. So this one, as you can see, is a 240 watt unit and the input is 24 volt but it has a range that goes from 18 up to about 30 or so then the output of it is 12 volt with a 20 amp max that's plenty to do the kinds of things that i'm doing in this regard now all i did was take the the wire here that connects to the cigarette lighter adapter i've got an inline fuse into it and inside here there's a little 15 amp fuse and that's it really it just plugs in the immersion heater which feeds directly off to the coffee cup where I'm heating up the water and it's already getting lukewarm. So I'll let that run for a couple minutes, but as you can see, 
this is definitely a minimalist setup. I've shown other batteryless solar generators that I've done in previous videos, and this one's kind of half the scale. You know, you can only do one thing plugged into the cigarette lighter adapter at a time. And I use this 195 watt solar panel just to show you that, you know, you can do it off of a single panel. Now the maximum load I'm normally gonna take on this cigarette lighter adapter is maybe 130, 150 watts tops. Whereas, like I say, the solar panel is 195 watts. And the efficiency of these little buck converters are normally about 95%. So it's good enough in that regard of I'll, able, I'll be able to power off small items and that kind of stuff. And as you can see, there's not much more to it than the panel itself. You know, I went with this one. I've shown in previous videos the flexible ones, but I just thought I'd bring this one out to show because these ones, generally speaking, have a longer life to them. You can normally get, you know, close to a 30-year life out of these solar panels um, that are producing a decent amount of power. And uh, whereas the flexible ones, you only get, say, five, maybe 10 years tops out of them before they just start to crap out on you. And so, you know, this kind of setup, if you wanted to have it where it was for long-term use. There's not much in this unit that could break. The immersion heaters normally give. And I'm debating about rewiring those up to have 10 gauge wire because I just don't like the thin wires that they supply. They're not really designed to hold the amperage that uh, gets used through them. But in this video, like I say, I'll switch over to using this little unit as well. Like I said, it gives me the USB functionality. I only have one port. And it's only at 2.1 amps. And then I've got a little 75 watt AC. So it'd be enough to run things like um, electric shavers and potentially battery chargers and those types of things. And uh, this was a $25 item. So to give you an idea, the solar panel itself, like I say, I got that for 150. The buck converter was 25. The cigarette lighter adapter I got off eBay for I think it was 18 or 20 bucks and then this thing's for 25 so you know a little bit over and then the immersion heater just to you know boil off the coffee so at roughly about 200 220 bucks 230 bucks somewhere in around there you can have this level of functionality and this stuff can last you for years and years and years you know uh, I'll like I say I'll switch over and use the other items and I'm gonna cook myself off lunch as I've done in previous videos but I just want to get this coffee going to begin with so I'll cut it here and I'll cut back when I start plugging in other devices yeah so and hopefully the camera's picking this up but uh, you can start to see the bubbles forming on the element. A couple of them are bubbling to the surface and stuff now. And that's the way I check to see how hot things are. The pinky test. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of a mix between sun and cloud here. So uh, normally if it was full sun, this would take about 10 minutes to bring up to a full. But because of the cloudy conditions, uh, the intermittent cloud that I've been facing, it's slowing it down a bit. So it'll be about 15, 20 minutes until the, the point where the coffee's hot enough and ready for me to have as a hot coffee. Yeah. Okay, so it's been about 15, 20 minutes now. Just gonna check. Yeah, that's hot enough. I can't keep my pinky in there. So that, to me, is hot enough for my liking. So I'm just gonna unplug the uh, immersion heater. Let that sit and cool for a minute. And if you've seen it in previous videos, I've done this in lots of videos, but it, this is instant coffee mixed with coffee whitener, sugar, and uh, hot chocolate powder. I mix them all together to uh, my liking. And that way I can just have them ready for when I'm out in the field, pre-mixed. And then I just, depending on how strong I want it, determines how much I want to put in the cup, yeah? So, pretty elementary. The thing I like about using this hot chocolate coffee, coffee whitener and sugar mix is the longevity it can last in my bag. Remember, the shelf life is really long on all of those items, so... Perfect almost too hot to drink and as you can see you know it's a really simple setup You've got the solar panels that feed off to the mc4 connections just to hook into the wiring the wiring goes into the buck converter it all passes through a little 15 amp inline fuse and then right out to the cigarette lighter adapter you know and then you can plug in whatever devices you want into the cigarette lighter adapter in the other battery list solar or you know battery list uh, solar generator that i built 
you have the capacity to run AC and USB and the 12 volts all at the same time. In this setup, you wouldn't. You know, you can only run off of the single. You could do a splitter to come off that, but the power coming off the single solar panel is going to be 195 watts at best. So this really is scaled down version of the other one that I've done, yeah? So I'll grab my uh, little AC inverter with the USB and that kind of thing, plug it in, and start to put some loads on that, yeah? Okay, so I'll show you now. I've got that cigarette lighter adapter. I've got this little 75 watt AC inverter here. Gives me like wall power, if you will. And then the USB, I simply just plug that in. Elementary. And you should see the green light lighting up right there. Let's me know that there's current flowing. So it's on and active. First thing I'm gonna do is plug in my USB. I'm just gonna plug that into my phone. Hold the phone up nice and close for you. Hopefully you guys heard the bing, took the charge. I think on the tablet last time I had the volume down so I didn't hear the bing very well on the camera, but such is life. And I don't know if the camera's picking that up. I'm taking the charge. So no problem, the USB devices are easy enough. Like I say, I'll just unplug that momentarily. Now I've got this battery bank. I use this as just a simple example, but it's uh, AC power, you know, wall power, if you will, to charge up my battery bank. I can simply plug that in. And I don't know if the camera's gonna catch this because it's pretty bright, but the orange light should be lighting up. Let me see. Yeah, the orange lights are lighting up. I don't think the camera's gonna catch that, but that's okay. So one of the limitations about this setup even though it's super light. I mean, this thing's separate from the solar panel. This thing's maybe two pounds. There's nothing to it, really. All you have is this buck converter, the inline fuse, and the cigarette lighter adapter. Then it gives you the capacity to go out to 12 volt devices that uh, I can then, like I say, run AC or USB and that kind of stuff off of it. But one of the handy parts about this kind of setup is if I wanted to charge multiple devices, like I say, I've got the one USB here where I can still plug into that. And like I say, I plug my phone in. And the phone will take the charge at the same time as I'm charging the battery bank. But if I wanted to have multiple devices now that I was charging, I'm not necessarily limited because I have this battery bank with me. I'm not necessarily limited to charging just one USB. Like I say, I can take the charge off either device, right? So I can be charging my phone at the same time as the battery bank is taking a charge as well. And I can plug in, like I say, four devices here, then I've got a micro USB on this side. So I can plug in multiple USB based devices to charge simultaneously as I'm going, if you will. So it's good in that regard of, like I say, I'll just switch that back over. Now, when it comes to using this to cook with, um, it's exactly the same as the other battery list setup I had. The little, uh, I'll just grab it here, that little, water immersion heater, let me see here. This little water immersion heater that I have, this thing takes roughly about 10 to 11 amps at the 12 volts. So this is running 120, 130 watts worth of power. The solar panel itself produces the 195. I could easily cook food the same as I've shown in other videos with 12 volt cookers and that kind of thing. I'm not going to do that in this example. I forgot my cooking pot. I was going to cook up lunch with this as well, but I just forgot the cooking pot. But this immersion heater uses the same amount of power as the cooking pot does to give you an example. So you're still able to cook food. You're able to power your devices and everything else. If I switch back down to using the flexible solar panel instead of the rigid one, I just brought this as an example that uh, I could easily have this entire setup in under 10 pounds. You know, to give you an idea of the weight, if you will, it's nothing, you know, of I'm gonna unplug this stuff. And, but hopefully this gives you an idea of if you wanna move into solar and have enough where, you know, you wanna go off grid with it and you wanna have a usable amount of power, you know, this type of setup is really probably one of the most minimalist setups I know of. And like I say, all it really is is just solar panels plugging into this buck converter. It steps the voltage down to 12 volt. In here, I've got a little inline 15 amp fuse that sits in there that can be replaced if it gets blown. So you can throw a couple of those into a plastic bag and strap it to the back or something if you want it. But other than that, there's nothing to it. 
there's not much more than just the wiring itself. Now, if that's really the minimalist solar setup that I know of, and then like I say, depending on what my power demands are, I'm gonna wanna go into at least a 200 watt solar panel to be within reason. You know, 175 watts really down to the lower edge if I wanna be able to cook and run immersion heaters and that kind of thing. The one thing to be mindful of is the reality of, you know, there is gonna be sun and cloud, you're not gonna have ideal conditions all the time. So if you want these devices to work in kind of a wider range of weather, then it's best to overpower the panels by a bit, knowing that if there's a bit of cloud and that kind of thing, you're still gonna be able to run these devices without significant issues. You know, obviously if it gets to heavy cloud and it's really gray and dark outside, you're not gonna be able to run anything, you know? It's, it's gonna be kind of limited in that regard. But for simplicity's sake, there wasn't much to build here. And like I say, yeah, that's taking the charge. So there's, there's literally not much to build here. And this level of capacity gives me the ability where I can boil water, I can power devices, I can run little shavers and that kind of stuff. Like I say, it's only 75 watts, so you're not gonna be running high powered items. But if you don't need to, if you just need to run small things like battery banks and shavers and those types of things, they don't normally rely on huge piles of power to kind of get them going. Uh, if you can have this stuff off grid for extended periods of time, because there is no battery involved, you don't have to worry about the batteries dying through time, other than the battery that's this, you know, if you will, for the example. But in this entire setup, there's no batteries involved. This could last years and years and years without any issues. And like I said, at the cost of less than 250 bucks, easily less than $250, that uh, you could have this for years to give you kind of peace of mind when you're off grid, um, knowing that you do have some sort of elect electrical capacity, yeah? So I'll wrap this video up at this point in time. Like I say, I was gonna cook a lunch and that, and I just forgot the 12 volt pot. <laughs> but uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Cheers.